Throughout our time researching ancient antiquities, we have stumbled across many anomalies which, to this day, the questions we have raised regarding these sites have yet to be satisfactorily answered by anyone. How did ancient, seemingly post-cataclysmic civilizations accomplish such feats of ancient engineering? Not only are there countless ancient structures found on nearly every continent on Earth that are beyond modern capabilities, but the way in which they were liberated from the quarries and bedrock in which they were sourced, often many miles away, remains a burning question. Furthermore, the clues to these now lost techniques the knowledge and indeed tools used to create these monstrous megaliths, the fingerprints of these now long forgotten activities still remain all over the hard granites once selected and used. No matter the geographical separation many of these sites share, it seems was not an issue, and they not only match, but as we have previously postulated based on said data, would appear to have been created with not only the same tools and techniques, but by a civilization whose tentacles far outstretch modern paradigms in regards to a single super-civilization having once been responsible for these extraordinary acts of ancient engineering. How can we continue to believe such sites were the work of academically shared, subsequently studied, in depth, and thus proven civilizations which we now know to have been incapable of such feats. The unfinished obelisk of Aswan, the megaliths of Yangshan Quarry, the polygonal astonishing feats of the mountaintop temples of Peru, and so on, all share the same scars upon the weather-resistant rocks used in said structures. India, China, Peru, Egypt, and so on, yet interestingly, Different stone cutting techniques are found upon different locations, yet seemingly coalesce within Aswan Quarry and other structures such as the Great Pyramids within Egypt. Diagonally cut stones, such as those within Baalbek and much further afield, are present within this quarry within Egypt. However, what makes the location of these massive pyramids special is that from the data, the evidence we have gathered, the structures were either built before said civilizations arrived and subsequently flourished upon our planet, but that these enormous structures were shared, possibly even an intercontinentally shared accomplishment achieved by not one, but many ancient super-civilizations, which, it would appear, were even more capable than that of modern man. These butter-cut stones such as the techniques seemingly used upon the abandoned obelisk of Aswan, are shared with many other sites, protuberances, found within Peru and many other polygonal sites, are also present upon the pyramids, yet are seemingly much later additions. However, they are not only present on ruins around the world also, but the tool marks we have used to separate these sites are present within Egypt in abundance. The only other place we have witnessed such shared anomalies is Bazda Caves in Turkey, used by us to not only identify these techniques, but to pinpoint which lost civilization were where, and thanks to the pyramids, it would seem when. They not only share these marks, which are present all over structures across the world, but are only utilized in their fullest upon these two sites, so far discovered only shared at these particular sites and nowhere else found so far. However, interestingly, Baalbek seems to also share protuberances with other polygonal sites, but also possesses curious semicircular crescent-shaped tool marks across its biggest megaliths, as if a less accomplished tool than that used, we would postulate later, after these techniques were mastered as found within Aswan, Sacsayhuaman, and many other apparently more advanced ruins found elsewhere on Earth. Who were these ancient people? How did they accomplish such astonishing feats of ancient engineering? We not only find the pursuit of answers to such questions incredibly important to the development of our knowledge in regard to our origins, but is a quest we will always find highly compelling. The Forager Population Paradox 
Along with a number of other paradoxes found in a number of academic fields of research, is now finally rediscovering much regarding our past, vindicating proof of what we have long argued is still hidden. In many areas, buried under meters of earth or virtually impenetrable forests, chapters of lost human history lay waiting to be found which due to our research into similarities and differentiating factors within unexplained ruins, at least three advanced civilizations once lost, we claim are now finally being rediscovered. Geological research has proven again and again, through the dating of many natural processes, the submergence of land masses, along with studies into erosion rates. Along with carbon radiation dating, Many ruins, once claimed as a mere few thousand years old, have inadvertently, regardless of the subsequent conservative attempts at dating these zones, are now shown to have been undeniably far older. Yet the forager population paradox is scientific evidence which demonstrates that human civilizations did indeed once experience a global catastrophe. Known by many names, the Great Flood, the Great Deluge, Rapture, along with many other names in many ancient texts found all around the world. Only a paradox due to it not fitting with a paradigm. Population growth is a science which can accurately track the history and indeed ancestral origins and age of a species. Yet there lay a problem with the study of human population in particular. At some point within a now forgotten history, the human race experienced an event which reset our population growth. It would seem that even the great effort of bending carbon datings, which we allege are dishonest agings of ancient ruins and the civilizations that built them, was still not conservative enough to hide this truth. Once a thriving ancient population seemingly vanished. Data supported, or rather corroborated by the many unfinished and destroyed ancient relics we often discuss on our channel. According to the Proceedings of National Academy of Science USA, in a research project titled Periodic Catastrophes Over Human Evolutionary History are Necessary to Explain the Forager Population Paradox. They state, and I quote, Investigating multiple demographic scenarios in a large sample of human and chimpanzee populations, we find that periodic catastrophes, combined with plausible fertility or mortality reductions, can reasonably generate zero population growth. Our findings bolster arguments about the role of intergenerational cooperation in supporting the colonizing potential of human populations once released from catastrophes." End quote. Simply put, the only way to explain the population growth or lack of at certain points of our species' history in comparison to its persistently claimed age, the paradox, or the current population, proves that we did indeed experience catastrophe. An event long denied as ever being experienced by our species, with the last acceptably permitted event K2 having been experienced only by the dinosaurs. We find the data, the paradox, and the methodological truths it exhibits highly compelling. Bazda Cave, within modern-day Turkey, is unquestionably an astonishing place. An enormous cave system that many people simply assume is a natural formation, with select areas quarried out subsequently used to build numerous ruins throughout the area. However, what many people have seemingly overlooked, and we presume funded academics have deliberately ignored, are the signatures left all over the stonework throughout the network of caverns, strongly indicating that this huge complex was once, somehow, hewn by ancient man. Also, and perhaps most intriguingly, is that this task was completed using a number of different advanced tools, whose marking, thanks to ours and others' astute research, has also been found scarred upon many other ancient sites, some located far away from this enigmatic cave system. The stone, once quarried out to create this enormous cavern, subsequently located as having been used to create a number 
of remarkable precision-cut monuments, including a once-existing wall which surrounded an ancient site known as Hiron. Additionally, due to the realization of this quarried stone having been used in Hiron, in addition to our own previous research, we have successfully linked Basda to yet more ancient ruins, all dated to vastly different eras within history. Thanks to our channel's creator possessing a photographic memory, we have correlated undeniable characteristic similarities, connecting many of these ancient sites throughout the world. Firstly, the signatures left by advanced stone-cutting technologies, tool marks left upon the cave system's walls. Scars upon the stonework, which are present at many other sites, Baalbek in Lebanon, Petra in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry within China, and at least two rock-cut monuments within India, the roof of a precision-cut cave, and an unfinished temple known as Veduvan Coil. This crescent-shaped scarring, often of an overlapping fashion, we feel, is reminiscent of scars left by modern-day tunnel boring equipment. Yet due to the lack of in-depth research surrounding such anomalies, with these tool marks, as far as we are aware, only receiving limited attention at Baalbek and merely photographed at Yangshan, have begun to name such markings ourselves in an effort to categorize and identify such curiosities being discovered worldwide, with these now known to us as crescent cup and ring marks. The second form of scarring, found upon much of the cave's roof, now known to us as groove and ridge markings, are distinctly different in form and appearance to the crescent cup and ring marks. These rows of grooved scars, however, are identical to those found in plain sight upon the unfinished obelisk located within Aswan Quarry, Egypt. A stone monument well over a thousand tons in weight which has long been academically argued as having been abandoned where it lay, due to a fault line discovered during the quarrying process. However, interestingly, others have presented strong evidence that this crack appeared later within history. A fellow alternative researcher, Chris Dunn, argues within his book Advanced Technology in Ancient Egypt that the crack happened later on in the obelisk's life and that the monolith was abandoned before the fault appeared. Backing up his claim, he shows that details upon the monument were being engraved over the top of the location of the fault line, an undertaking that would have clearly been illogical. Although he does not put forward a postulation as to why this crack occurred, we believe it may have been due to a shift in the surrounding geography, more than likely a ground-shifting earthquake not only cracking the obelisk, but possibly due to and accompanied by a cataclysmic event, which quite possibly caused the demise of the civilization, who were liberating the obelisk, thus leaving it unfinished. But I digress. Our focus is upon the scars left by enigmatic, clearly advanced stone-cutting tools, preserved with clarity upon the erosion-resistant granite of the obelisk. These exact markings also undeniably litter the ceiling of the Basda cave. Additionally, these groove and ridge marks are also found upon the megalithic, often polygonal stonework within Peru, at Cusco, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, to name but a few. The third set of signature scarring upon the cave stone walls links Basda cave to another similarly gigantic artificially created cave system, known as Longyu Caves, located within China. Once an undoubtedly immense excavation, yet the quarried stone from this undertaking has never been located. Millions of tons of stone seemingly vanished from the face of the earth. However, thankfully, the quarried stone from the Basda cave systems, as mentioned, was utilized and located. However, 
the civilization responsible for shaping these quarried stones at Haran, were unquestionably responsible for several other sites found around the world. YouTube channel New Earth, first linking these curiously shaped stones to Nimrod's fortress on Mount Hermon with Jerash in Jordan, with us continuing this trail of connecting ancient dots, thankfully due to the uniqueness of stonework. Let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now, those very same blocks, when they are in Baalbek, they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount, they are again assuring us that they are some 2000 years old. In Bosnia, they are telling us they are whatever, three or more thousand years old. And of course, they are built by some obscure unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate. Enabling us to link the Royal Kurgan in Crimea to New Earth's discoveries and now to the ancient ruins of Haran in Turkey. Not only can we argue that this cave system was indeed man-made, but is the only site we know of that possesses such an array of these enigmatic stone-cutting technology scars allowing us to successfully link it to at least 15 ancient sites around the world. The cave itself, Basran, Haran, Baalbek, Petra, Jerash, Yangshan, Longyu, Vetavan Koil, Malmala Param, Cusco, Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, Nimrod's Fortress, and the Royal Kurgan. Possibly many others we are yet to recognize. In conclusion, the vast array of different, as yet unidentified, advanced stone-cutting equipment scars present within the cave, each leaving its own unique signature upon the stone. The shaping of these stones, unique to an unknown civilization's signature handiwork, found worldwide, used within an array of as yet unexplained ruins, academically claimed to be of vastly different ages and the work of vastly different cultures. We find it not only clear evidence of academic fallacy, but incredibly compelling.